Welcome to the Four Eyes podcast, brought to you by Young OD Connect. We give you a clear view into the new grad optometry world across Canada and the U.S. We are your hosts. I'm Dr. Deepan Carr. And I'm Dr. Amrit Bilku. Hello. Hello. Hello, folks. How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi, Good. Mike. How are, How are you? you? Good. All oh right. Oh, my gosh. I, I love your background. Thanks. Yeah, it's a green screen. Yeah. Oh, your oh. backgrounds are cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, ours are, mine's just yeah. the actual background. I think Deepon's <laughs> background is from like 1985. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. That's and funny. mine are is those... from okay. Ikea. <laughs> oh, cool photos. Is that Lake Louise? Yeah, this is Banff. Yeah, good yeah. eye. Yeah, I'm from uh, up... uh, Lloydminster. Oh. I think Deepon will know. She's she's from Calgary. You're like, I'm from Calgary, Alberta. I, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> like small um, world. Yeah. I grew up in a little town called Marwane, right outside of Lloyd. Oh, <laughs> I'm not from there. So I'm, I'm from, she's Toronto. on the opposite side. She's no. an Ontario in Toronto. I'm the, what part? I'm the problem province. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like Ontario has really become a big problem for the country these days. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Four Eyes podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on and um, share your journey and your business with us. Um, would you mind giving us an introduction about yourself for our listeners? Yeah, sure. So Dr. Mike Neal, I'm a practicing OD in rural Pennsylvania, tiny, uh, not even close to thriving metropolis of Holly, Pennsylvania, <laughs> out in the Pocono Mountains. And uh, about in 2017, 2018, I was just completely overwhelmed and ready to pull all my remaining hair out because of hiring issues in our practice. Yeah. So um, yes. at the time I was in executive yes. coaching in Toronto, in fact, and uh, what we we're looking at was how these companies were hiring because they had fantastic teams, absolutely fantastic teams, did not seem to have the problem, super long-term people, et cetera. And I did a kind of an analysis of how they're doing their hiring, did, broke it all down and realized that uh, they were hiring basically the exact opposite way we were. And that's why we were getting the terrible results that we were getting, you know, reliably terrible results. We were doing everything upside down and backwards. Yeah. So that's, um, you know, all the stuff I'm going to talk about today is from the trenches. Mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, where you need to wear the helmet, the Kevlar at the front desk of the practice, the, uh, the whole nine yards. It's all based upon private practice, not... Not from, uh, you know, the 50,000 foot view or the cat bird seat or anything like that. This is yeah. uh, in the trenches stuff. Which I think um, we're really excited for because I think it's so valuable to our listeners. Deepon has brought this up off the mm -hmm. podcast and maybe even on the podcast in a few episodes before. The staff is so important to even mm -hmm. the OD's experience, right? Whether you're the practice owner or the associate OD working at the clinic, yeah. um, you really need your your staff basically keeps the clinic running and just holds everything together. And so, of course. Yep. yeah, we're, we're excited to just learn more and learn more from your experiences. Cause I think it'll help both sides. Yeah. And I think well, it, like, especially mm -hmm. new grad ODs, they don't realize once they graduate, how important staff can be. They mm -hmm. just think, you know, Oh, as long as the equipment's there, everything's good. But <laughs> yeah. then you realize, hold yeah. on, where's my support staff? Why yeah. wasn't this done? why, like what's happening over here? Why was this booked? So yeah, yeah, I think that's one of the things Amrit and I even learned when we graduated and we were like, mm -hmm. yeah, clinic is going okay, but, uh, but what's the happening? Staff. Your staff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's where I think a lot of challenges lie for a lot of clinics and a lot of ODs. Um, but you kind of talked about your company, build my team. Can you kind mm -hmm. of go into more detail about the goals of this business? Yeah, you bet. Um, so build my team. First of all, I wear two hats. I'm the, the founder of build my team, but I also own an optometry practice. Mm -hmm. The kicker is that build my team staffs our practice. Um, nice. I have nothing to do personally with the hiring of the team members in my own practice. Um, and it is a godsend. It is all the stress in the world off my back. Uh, we have essentially a bat phone uh, when somebody gives their notice or, or we need to replace anybody. We reach out to build my team. They, they essentially do all the work to fill the position. Now, um, that was created 
from my cell phone uh, back in 2018. Wow built an email model to reach out to applicants and, um, you know, to generate applicants, reach out to them, et cetera. It was a complete failure. Email is a disaster for hiring. And I know there's a lot of young people listening to this podcast. You guys already know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's using texts nowadays, like emails. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So built this system that essentially functions to get as many applicants as possible to apply for the jobs that are open within the practice um, selects the A players out of those applicants. Mm -hmm. And it does so not by finding the A players, the superstars, it does so by rejecting everybody else. Mm -hmm. And this is critical. This is how Disney, the four seasons, these incredible customer service organizations mm -hmm. that have these superstar um, team members, consistently great team members. That's how they do it. And that's the system that we built. Um, so the end result is, we have clients that um, reach out to us. They have a position that just opened up. We, our team will write the job description, publish it to 22 different job boards, take all of the applicants, and there are a whole bunch of applicants for these positions, run them through an assessment process. Um, it's a very specific psychometric assessment process that the candidates do. And when they are done, that process, we essentially know more about them than they know about themselves in terms of their strengths and talents and what they're naturally good at. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the absolute end result is a video interview for the finalist candidates, um, which our, our Build My Team team members do. And then we send over the, the um, anywhere between one to three uh, superstars to the practice. That's the entire system that's built. And it's automated extremely fast because of the automation. Um, and so it gives a practice a flat out big, big, big uh, competitive advantage in the hiring process. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what Build My Team does. Hey, oh, by the way, two things I wanted to mention. Um, quite affordable, like very affordable, far cheaper than what you're doing it yourself for. And the clients that um, really love our service that we provide, they do something else. They don't do the hiring. They're not knee deep in in resumes, dying of paper cuts. They're not uh, freaking out on Monday morning because they're not sure if the team members are going to show up. Th those yeah. days are over. They don't live in fear anymore of what's happening with the team. It changes your life as an OD, especially as an owner. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what Build My Team does um, and has done that for our practice for six years now. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, long and answer, but that's the whole summary. No, I, I, I have a great. question about like the mm -hmm. um, automated system. Is there a minimum amount of applicants that need to apply? Like what if there's, I don't know, less than 200 or something? Is that yeah. enough or do you need a certain so, amount? Yeah. So we reject on average, uh, statistical average right now, we reject 97% of applicants. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and so that gets the, the cream of the crop. One of the ways I would describe it is the, the Build My Team approach is not based upon looking for experience. Okay, mm -hmm. so to get the number of candidates that you're talking about, we're not looking for experience. Experience within our model is, and it's a little counterintuitive, it's more of a red flag. Uh, we'll call it a pink oh. flag. Okay? okay, I learned that term the other day. <laughs> <laughs> um, experienced people, when they have the natural strengths and talents for the position, they're unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. also extraordinarily rare. Mm -hmm. yes. What ends up happening more often than not is somebody will come in with an experience and this happens tremendously to younger OD uh, practice owners. They demand, they require, they have entitlement. I've been doing this for 30 years. You're, you know, you weren't even in diapers when I started. I've heard all those things. Yeah. And what our model does is we find people who are, they have a healthcare mindset because we mm -hmm. test for that. Um, they naturally want to help people. Yeah. They, we measure their speed of learning. They naturally learn quickly. Mm. Okay. So not too quickly, because if they're as smart as a doc, they leave. Yeah. Uh, it's not challenging enough. If they don't learn quickly, they never leave, but you can't wait to fire them because yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's terrible, right? Very true. Um, yeah. You're just so waiting measure, like, all right. So true. When are you just giving waiting your for you to mess up <laughs> so you can just yeah. strike them out? Yeah. 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 Don't worry. You won't have to wait long. It's momentarily, right? I yeah. mean, that's 
that's how long it takes. So we measure their speed of learning. And then we also measure a whole bunch of critical factors about them, um, how they they work, what they're naturally uh, good at, how they handle stress. Do they handle details and, um, you know, versus kind of loosey goosey with details? Mm -hmm. How strong is their follow up? We have pages of this information, like pages of all automated That's amazing. to mm -hmm. like select yeah. candidates. Wow. Yeah. So what this boils down to is when build my team sends over a candidate for the role, uh, you know, for our, our clients, we already know they can do the job. We know that yeah. before they even get to the video interview. Mm -hmm. What, um, so there's no maybe about that. We know they're excellent at the job because they have the natural strengths and talents for the job. And the video interview, the purpose of that is to determine if they would be a great fit for your practice or not. Yeah. So things like, are they, um, as a podcast guest, if I showed up in a, in a tank top um, for your podcast, would I be respecting your podcast? Like we all know the answer to that, of course not, right? So we want somebody who's going to take the position seriously. They take the yeah. interview seriously, because if they don't, they're going to not take your practice seriously. Mm -hmm. Like they're representing you. So, yeah. you know, we have team members that, uh, that review these and they're not looking for whether you're black, white, green, pink, it doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Your gender doesn't, none of that stuff matters. We're mm -hmm. so past that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. What mm -hmm. matters is are, how they're going to perform in your practice. Yeah. This right. entire model is, is um, optimized to find performers. Yeah. And in a, a new OD practice or a younger OD practice, you won't figure out how to do that mm -hmm. because- we're hiring based upon resumes and yeah. interviews. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and those don't work to find uh, rock star performers unless you get lucky. That's it. Everything you're saying is so true. And I feel that right now because uh, I just went through a hiring process and we just mm -hmm. hired our second team member for my new practice. And yep. yeah, it was a lot of shuffling through paper resumes. It was, you know, screening all these, you know, like 40, 50 applicants, you know, printing them all out, highlighting each experience. And even when they sounded amazing on paper, yeah. then the phone interview is absolutely terrible. You know, the, the way they speak, um, they're not confident in the way they speak, or they really sound like they don't care about the position when they speak. And then I'm yeah. like, why did you apply for this position? <laughs> Well, so, have, just so much. Have you that. tried applying for one? When you apply for a position on the major job sites, you don't yeah. have to read the job. Yeah, I it know. just like applies for you. Like you, <laughs> right, you don't that, even know what you applied for. Exactly. So I, we've had applicants like that. I don't even think they knew where where they who was calling them. When <laughs> like, we solve that problem with Build yeah. My Team, when they apply for a job, um, within five seconds, their cell phone buzzes with a text message from Build My Team. Yeah. Five seconds. Oh, okay. Why did, why isn't it 10? Because 10 was too long. They'd yeah. already moved on to the next job. Yeah. Um, docs yes. don't have the faintest clue how horrendous it is on the hiring side of things when you aren't um, combating the systems that these job boards put into place. Like you, yeah. it, you have to actively combat them. So yeah. that's one of the uh, massive advantages that Bill, my team has versus trying to do it yourself. Um, mm -hmm. The other is, is simply uh, the effectiveness. I mean, we're rejecting almost 97% or a little higher of the positions. So mm -hmm. when the candidates get sent over, we guarantee each of the candidates because we know they're going to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're guaranteed yeah. for 90 days. Uh, and from a cost standpoint, it's absolutely positively um, much less than you're spending now. And it is yeah. also, um, I mean, quite simply, in a new practice, I would argue that the time from the owner has to be spent on building the practice. There is nothing more valuable than that. Um, yeah. Not dying from a thousand paper cuts from resumes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so true. Yeah. Build my team sounds awesome. And I think um, when we think about now post COVID world, um, you know, the staffing industry has changed so much because I think you said you started this in 2018, correct? You betcha. So mm -hmm. how did build my team adapt to like this new kind of environment of hiring and just how staff members just perform, you know, in the office on a day-to-day -day basis? 
Well, I think the first thing we noticed was that statistically, because everything we do is just measured, um, yeah. measured, we have feedback loops, so we continuously improve. It's measured, it's algorithmic, it's repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed a number of applicants was after COVID, I mean, down, depending on the, the area of the country, because um, we're in the US and North America, uh, well, US and Canada, mm -hmm. some of the areas were down 50%. A lot of folks who were working in healthcare or that labor pool that that like to work as an administrative person in healthcare, um, a good amount of them just flat out decided that they can stay home and make a similar amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Very true. or, or childcare, this child, like there's all kinds of reasons, but that aspect of the labor pool has um, diminished and it's substantial uh, in certain areas of the country. So that was one thing that we noticed. The way that we combat that is quite simply making sure we have as many applicants as possible. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that our, our new customers say is they're getting hardly any applicants. Mm -hmm. So imagine mm -hmm. you, you have a position, like you said, what, 40 resumes you were looking through? Yeah. What if you had four? Beg. You post a position. <laughs> yeah, you post Beg. a position. You got like four people. You look at the resumes. Like, you have to be kidding me. Um, I'm, yeah. you know, um, and from our, in our world, looking at those resumes, you could be sitting on a superstar. You have no yeah. idea. Yeah. You right. have no idea because a resume doesn't tell you what somebody's good at. Yeah. It, it will say things like I can type, you know, I know how to use Microsoft Word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used and to. And who even knows if that's true half it, the time? I feel like yeah. a lot of people don't, they're not honest on their resume. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, you're right. You can't really tell personality and work ethic from a resume. No, nope. one, um, uh, one of the things yeah, we used to do in our practice was I would, um, I did this for a while and I just got tired of it. I walk them over to a computer and I have them start typing, doing this. Peck, oh. Peck, peck, like, oh yeah, you can type 60 words a minute. No, you can't. You know, <laughs> I, you gotta be kidding me. Right. So yeah. now with, with most of the uh, practice management software, it's more web-based and, you know, click, 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 click. So the typing's a little bit less so, but that was a, a really good kick in the pants for me as a business owner that resumes are made up. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yes. Right. Like flat Definitely. out made up. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of reference checks and all the rest of that, good luck. Um, <laughs> almost all employers are now worried about giving any information out via reference check because they're afraid they get sued by you know, yeah. for who knows what. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't even work. Our approach on the psychometric side of things um, works so well because it demonstrates their actual talents and, and uh, strengths. I have a quick add-on question to this, and then we can yeah. move on to another part of this topic. But so if Build My Team is reaching out to a bunch of applicants in, in you know, mm -hmm. in different settings, how how are you collecting those applicants though initially? Is it through their resumes first and then you sift through those resumes for like certain no. words? Like how how do you grab the applicants in the first place? We or don't look do at you... the resumes until the very end of the process. Okay. 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 Yeah. So how do we grab them? Um, they apply yeah. for the job, they get a text, and the text asks mm. them to uh walk through our process our our Got it. um I see our assessment process and right okay. off the bat, about a quarter of them don't do that. Yeah. So oh, then you're okay. already ruling out the lazy people. Yep. <laughs> who won't do it. Right. Exactly. Those yeah, are the that's, people. That's awesome. Those are the people whose resumes you printed. Yeah. Right. So yeah. out of 40 people, what's that? Uh, 10, it's late at night here. 10 people whose resumes you printed had to go through yeah. those 10 people wasted your time. Yeah. Yeah. Because statistically they want nothing to do with your practice Yeah. because right. it just got hard. Right. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to hire somebody who is afraid of hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is I care for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hard's, hard's it's so every true. Day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, that's fair. That's good. Yeah. And then I just had a question about, so say you go through all these applicants, they make it to the video part where, you know, yeah. you're interviewing them. What are you specifically looking for at that part? Is it more like personality? Like what, are, what kind of questions are you asking them at that point? Well, we have um, questions that have, um, we're, we're really lucky. We nailed those questions early, early on. Um, and, and by the way, I wanted to quick plug for the video interview process. 95% um, of people show up for those video interviews. Oh, that's good. 
So yeah. think about that next time we have an interview in person and nobody shows up. Like yeah. these people have something invested into it. Yeah. So, you know, what are we asking them? Well, some of those are, are uh, you know, part of the secret sauce. But mm -hmm. what we're asking them is not necessarily the point. Mm -hmm. It's how they answer the question. Yeah, Got because it. the how is giving us a massive amount of information about that person. The things like their verbal cadence, their uh, um, are they using slang? Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of stuff we we look for. So I'll give you a, an example. Um, this is a story that just early on just blew my mind. One person after another after another. This didn't just happen once. It happened a whole bunch of times and continues to happen. We had young women dressed in their, like their interview suits or jackets, you know, uh, pantsies, that type of thing. Guess where they were doing their, their video interview. They were standing in their bathtub with their shower curtain wide open. The bathtub was right across from the sink. The sink had the best lighting in the house. Oh, oh so okay. they're standing in the bathtub. Their uh, cameras on the kitchen sink. They got it rigged up somehow so they can do the entire video interview standing with essentially a shower curtain right above their head. They look great. Now, oh. at first, we didn't know what to make of this. And then um, have a, a couple powwows. And one of our team members, who um, uh, is a, a mom, she said, they're, take, they're doing this because it's the only place in the house that is quiet. The kids yeah. are outside. Yeah. They're quiet. Oh, She's no. got the door locked. Yeah. The lighting is fantastic. And the light bulb went on in our heads. I'm like, oh my God, these are winners. These are fantastic yeah. people. They have virtually no resources. They got bupkis to rub together here. Yeah, but they're and doing yet, the best that they can. They did the absolute yeah. best that they can. They're knocking it out of the park. Yeah. So you think of how that extrapolates, right? So you take a person like that in a practice with very few resources and you say like, Hey, we got to get this thing done. We have hardly any way to get it done. How can we do this? And that's the type of person that's that is going to immediately start cooking. You know, how do we uh, accomplish this goal? You know, yeah. they they flew through all of our assessments. They're fantastic. Their video interview to a, a lay person would be like, absolutely not. And the real answer is as fast as yeah. you possibly can make them yeah. a job offer. Yeah. So. How much of that can you discern from a resume? Nothing. None. Zero. Zilch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Zilch. Right. And so when when you dive um, super deep into this process with, uh, you know, with people, you can't tell what they're good at. You can't tell what their strengths and talents are from a traditional process. That's why we had to change the game. And we yeah. did change the game. And now we can reliably get people, um, these these A players, into the positions and guess what? A players perform exceptionally well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm yeah. like thinking everything that you're talking about, I'm now thinking of like all the like red flags that we picked up when we interviewed people. Deep on, you're yeah. also interviewing people currently for the practice. That yeah. I to, mean, right? yeah. At our, our, this practice, I'm not an owner or anything, but I do have a hand in who's hired, but I will say it is very like I'm experiencing what you're experiencing Amr it's just kind of like I don't know you're just looking at a resume right you're not mm -hmm. really knowing if this person's going to work or how they're going to fit in yeah. with the rest of the team yeah. and that was my other follow up question like once you do the video interview and you're like okay this person's great do you kind of do an interview with everyone else in the clinic or is it kind of just like nope you're nope. good that you're going to fit in well like you have so, that much confidence in so when we first started this um we had a team that was, was really like, there's that old saying, you know, getting the right people on the bus and the right seats on the bus. We didn't even have a bus. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, we had a, like a moped. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I have it right was, now. <laughs> right. I mean, it was terrible. Right. So um, what ended up happening is we got serious about this. We started to see what um, can happen, like the strength and the incredible uh, ability of this system to find these performers. And so, our ops manager who runs both build my team and he oversees the practice. He's not the practice manager, but he did a spreadsheet, which I'd never seen before. Uh, it, it, it was an old operations trick because he's got 30 years of ops experience running businesses. Each person was either green, yellow, red. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, it was a traffic light for the for the team. Um, the red, these are people that they might have been great, but they're in the wrong role. They're mm -hmm. flat out in the wrong role for them. Um, this they didn't do a single thing all day that capitalized on their strengths or talents. They were just poor performers. Mm -hmm. And folks who are listening to this, you you got to separate the mentality of a poor performer from the role. Okay. Yeah. They can be a terrific person, but being asked every day to do something they're terrible at, it yeah. doesn't make them a bad person. It makes them the wrong person for the job. And yeah. those are two different things. So what I learned is that when, you know, that person's, they don't want to disappoint you. They want to try hard. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're trying to please you, mm -hmm. but they can't because they don't possess the ability to actually accomplish what you're asking them to do yeah. by, by releasing them from that. Uh, it's a freeing experience. It's massively positive. Sure, there might be some bumps in the road, but they get to move to a position. You're helping them move to a mm -hmm. position that they can, that they can be excellent at. So what Frank did is he took. Uh, we were at 14 team members. Um, wow. We went from 14 down to 10, and we replaced eight of them. Wow. We kept wow. two people That's out of 14. That's a big change. Yep. Yeah. And you say like, how the heck can you possibly do that? Um, it worked so well for us that our net income more than doubled. Holy moly. I believe yep. that. I, I do I believe that. it though, because the staff runs the clinic. Like that's, yes. it is what right. it is. And I mean, yeah. admittedly part of it, we, we had four fewer people and so well, how the hell do you have four fewer people? Your gross income must have plummeted. Nope. Went up substantially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, net income more than doubled the stress in the practice. Uh, oh, good Lord. It's a fraction of what it was because the the core reason why this happened is that A players want to work with A players. Mm -hmm. A players will tolerate B players. And A players <laughs> will leave their job because of C players. How yeah. fast can I get out of here? Yes. You guys don't have any idea what you're doing. I'll never excel in my role. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. And they know they're terrific. They're going to get another job that afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, super fast, uh, especially in, in this market. So if your team is one A player and a bunch of C players, what you have to do is take uh, out of those team members, you have to take the, the person who's in the worst fit for the role and you have to replace them, Yeah. replace them with an A player. Yeah. And next thing you know, like our net went up so high because we're four people less each year. And that's a big number, right? Yeah. That's um, huge. Also, the remaining team members were in the right, they're the right people on the bus, they're in the right seats on the bus. And we give, since they're great at their jobs, we give them the leeway to wait for it, drum roll, please do their jobs. Yeah, actually do yeah. their jobs. We and not get pick out up of the, after other people. Yeah, we get out of the way. Job. Yeah, right. So the, the A players in most practices walk around the place with a dustpan and a broom, just cleaning up after everybody all day long. Yes. Yeah. They can't perform because they're trying to do three people's jobs, mm -hmm. Yes. which I will tell you definitively, they can do three people's jobs, but they can't do those jobs when those three people are continuously messing things up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so oh my trite. God. This is like resonating with... Yeah be so much. No, it's true. I think yeah. every OD that's been in practice for at least a few years know who their A players are yes. and know who the C players are. And it's 100% yeah. true. A players can multitask, so they yeah. can do the job of they, all these other C yeah. players, but it's just the C players that are really dragging them dragging down. Everyone it's true. down. Like once you yeah. lose that A player cuz you're right, they know they'll be able to get a job yep. anywhere cuz they're good. Um, so they'll leave. Then you're left with these C players and you're like, should we just hire five more people to figure out what's yeah. going on? Like, why is there constant mistakes? Why is this not working? Mm -hmm. Why is this process not, process not working? It's yeah. one yeah. of the, yeah, and it's a huge frustration. The, the answers to those are things like, you know, why is this process not working? Well, the, you know, the build my team uh, approach is we would tell you that that particular individual um, can't follow process on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You in healthcare, you need people who are completely comfortable doing the same thing yeah. over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Right. Because like in a, let's take a scribe, for example, um, do you guys work with scribes? No, not yet. No? How about text? Do you have text doing yes. your, yes. your pre-testing and stuff? Yeah. Okay. So we'll use the example of text. Your tech walks in in the morning and gets creative. Now, no. first of all, 
From the looks on your <laughs> what faces. Does that mean? No. I could go either two ways. <laughs> Do yeah, the they, same thing you're supposed no, to do no, no. every day. No, we're not going to do the same thing today. We're going to get creative. So today, oh Lord, I'm going to take photos. I'm going to do OS and then OD. I'm going to present all the information, OS, OD. But by lunch, I'm going to switch it to OD and then OS. Yeah, no. And oh yeah, geez, um, yeah, the fields. Oh, I forgot to do the fields. Uh, you know, sorry, was distracted. Can't do that. Well, yeah. guess what? Whether that person is the nicest person or not, they got to go because they can't mm -hmm. follow the process. Mm -hmm. So when you run up against that type of, of person, what that tells me is that they weren't being selected for their ability to follow process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, your practice just decided to donate um, $10,000, fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 to inefficiency. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. by doing that, you can never, ever get off the ground. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. Does it have to be that way? Well, if you're not selecting people for the role that you want them to fill, and when I mean the role, like literally the the strengths and talents required to, yeah. to be a superstar on this role, then that's the outcome you're going to get in some form or another. Yeah. Um, where that won't happen and where I'll be dead wrong is when you get lucky. Yeah. Does build my team. So say if um, a clinic wants to work with build my team do they assess the current employee employees there like to get a sense of like to get a you're sense of okay is this an a player sleep? like yeah, what it's if a it's service an, an od it's that's like i want to switch up my team here but let's yeah. assess my current players total it... total service that we offer yeah. nice oh yeah okay that's great <laughs> yeah and that's inexpensive to do surprisingly very few ods take us up on that i don't know exactly why i mean i, I think, think it's a lot we're of... too nice yeah. I will. Yes. I, I'm gonna say uh, optometrists yeah. are the nice Canadians of like the healthcare professions, <laughs> right? <laughs> Deep one and I have yeah. said that on our podcast before. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, I think that came from Dr. Richard Maharaj. He, I think he yeah. was the one when we talked about personality types. Yeah. So optometry is a certain personality type, and yeah, we're probably just too nice. We we don't want you to analyze our staff and make them feel bad and make us yeah. want to like have to fire someone or right. yeah. replace someone. We're just too nice. And we're going to just put up with the terrible yeah. staff we have and be okay with it. <laughs> well, boy, I mean, as we're joking about, I'm just staring into space thinking that's, that's, he's like a prophet saying something like that. I mean, yeah. so yeah. many ODs are are comfortable with that. And if, look, yeah, because they don't see the other side, they don't, don't see what's yeah possible i feel like it's yeah. because so many ods complain about this and then it's like they think oh, you're normal. having a staffing problem me too that's it's life normal. let's move on but it's like yeah. they don't know what's possible i think that's why yeah and I, I so i ran into this problem um about a month ago i was on a podcast uh 2020 money podcast oh, yeah. uh, with adam yeah. uh, fantastic interviewer yeah, yeah really really good at what he does so I was on that podcast and I talked a lot, a lot about numbers. I mean, it's a financial podcast. We talk yeah. about that stuff because his listeners are interested in it. And what I found out after the fact is that he got a bunch of calls from, you know, communication from uh, his listeners um, saying that I was full of crap. There's no possible way that what he's saying is actually working. And so he emailed me about that. He was terrific about it because he's a great guy and emailed me about it. And uh, so I got on a Zoom with him and I showed him our tax returns. Nice. Mm. And then I showed him QuickBooks and I walked them all the way through QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, you know, wasn't making it up or anything like that. But you hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail absolutely on the head. And there, there's this old quote, the, um, the person at the bottom of the mountain doesn't know what the view from the top looks like. Right. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I'm not at the top of the mountain by any means. From uh, a, how a team performs, I got to mm. tell you, we're inside of the summit. Yeah. We are yeah. most certainly that way. Yeah. So once you're at the, you know, once you have the viewpoint from, from the higher end of the mountain, there's no going back. Yeah. Right. Very true. Um, you know, we like to stabilize things. We like to, you know, the, the nice uh, side of things is tremendous. Um, but you also got to remember those people, if they're unhappy in their positions, the actual nicest thing you could do would be to help them find a position that they're fantastic at. Yeah. Yes. And um, you remember uh, earlier I said that we um, we replaced all but two people. Mm -hmm. One of those people worked at our front desk and as a secretary for 
oh good lord a while she was super friendly just a wonderful person like i'm talking a wonderful person she could not ask for money mm. If a patient couldn't afford a copay, oh, you know, we'll get oh. you next time. Just one thing after uh, another. Wow. We were getting, we were getting, um, just, just killed, right? Yeah. yeah. And what we did instead, because normally she would have been fired, um, mm. what we did instead is, as our practice grew, we moved her to what we call a patient coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. So she's she does part-time billing like not billing so much as insurance authorizations and those things which she doesn't mind doing but she's a patient coordinator so she handles all of our referrals and mm -hmm. uh whenever we refer somebody there she'll walk into the exam room she gets it all scheduled she gives them the driving directions i mean she'll, she'll bake them cookies on for the drive on the way um, she's perfect at it yeah yeah i cannot tell you she went from almost getting canned to perfect yeah. Yeah. why did that happen because we moved her from an area that uses her weaknesses all day long mm -hmm. to one that uses her strengths all day long. Yeah. And she became, she went from the, the, at that point, the worst person on the team to the best person on the team. Yeah. yeah. That's a by great moving example. Internally. Yeah. 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 And you just created like a new role for a person that you never thought that your practice would even need. So like, for example, I don't, yeah. I don't work at any practice that has a patient coordinator. You know, we don't mm -hmm. have staff members going into the exam room and explaining the referral process to a patient. Right. But now that you just brought that up, I'm already thinking in my head, that's a great position to have for the clinic. Like now I'm actually thinking there's another opportunity for my current team or mm -hmm. a new mm -hmm. team member to do something else in my practice that, yeah. that I'm actually lacking in. Well, it, and you know, in her particular case, uh, her empathy is off the charts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. she will move mountains to get patients. I mean, move yeah. mountains to get them the care that they need. And guess yeah. what? When you're at the referral level, that's exactly what you want. And then yeah, from exactly. our practice standpoint, you know, how do we pay for that? Well, we don't have patients who don't show up for referral appointments. It's yeah. very few and far between. Mm -hmm. Um, because the the path is paved completely, you know, she calms them down from an anxiety standpoint, you name it, it's all done. Yeah. Um, you know, when you think of the, the risk for patients not showing up the lawsuits, the whatever it might be, um, we're not running into that because we make the process so, er so easy, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, because we, we capitalize on her strengths. Mike, I have a question that may interest some of our listeners who are not practice owners. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're not, you know, part of the, uh, active hiring process, but would build my team also be applicable to ODs that are looking for associate ODs because, you know, you could hire any OD because you know, they can do the job just like you can, you know, we all yeah. learn the same techniques right. in school, but even I'm thinking in the future, you know, I want a certain um, you know, persona, you know, in my practice, mm -hmm. I want a certain vibe in my practice yep. and I want people to practice in a similar way that I do. So would build my team work in that aspect for finding or filtering out associate ODs? We do it differently for associates. Now we do not hire associates. Mm -hmm. Um, there are uh, all kinds of recruiting companies that do that. Uh, we're not a recruiting company in a traditional sense. Okay. So we don't hire ODs. Got to be crystal clear about that. Um, the answer is yes, we can assess anybody as long as they're mm -hmm. willing to do it. But for associates, it's done differently. We just brought on an associate to our practice and she ran through the, you know, the, the full um, battery of assessments that we have. Oh, okay. It wasn't done to accept or reject her. It was mm -hmm. done to find out what her strengths are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we, we customized our, our onboarding and training process heavily customize the heck out of it mm -hmm. to hammer away at her strengths. Like yeah. she's, she's walking into an exam room with a different approach than uh, my wife or I do on the OD side of things. Cause we practice together because her approach is utilizing those strengths. Mm -hmm. So we tailored all of this stuff so that she comes out of the gate, just swinging every yeah. day. Okay. What we didn't have to do is wait five years until we actually learn the stuff about her and go through every yeah. speed bump imaginable because we shortcutted the process so spectacularly. She's doing incredibly well for some, mm -hmm. and she's a new grad, like mm -hmm. incredibly well. That's awesome. Yeah. 
and it's also the training side of things too, right? So yeah. we know how she communicates. We know how she, there's pages and pages of information that we have on how to best lay the groundwork for her to be stupendously successful. And it's Got working. It. Got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So even though you don't hire associates, um, build my team can be used to just assess the associates, you know, how they think, how they problem solve. Yep. what their personality is like. And all yeah, we can do it on stuff. our clients too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that gets dicey because a lot of clients don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in school, we're not taught how to run a practice. We're not taught any of that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So you roll into a practice and the first thing your team is looking for is, is direction. They want to be told what to do. Well, guess yeah. what? I mean, the yeah, first thing you can do is say, I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I have no idea, <laughs> yeah. but we're going to yeah. find this out. You know, and as docs, uh, especially when we're new to this, we don't want to lack confidence. You know, we don't want to let them know that we have no idea what we're doing. When you immediately find out what your strengths are, now you bring in team members that aren't strong in the areas you are. You want Mm -hmm. people who are strong in areas that you're terrible at. Yeah. I mean, build my team sounds awesome. I mean, you've definitely sold me. I definitely would have looked into this if I didn't just hire somebody yep. last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank God for those paper resumes. I found one. Yep. Out of you can still do, you can still do an assessment on them though. Yeah. And see I think that would be really interesting are. actually, just so I can get mm-hmm. a sense of, cause it's true. Once you, I mean, when you're hiring someone in the traditional sense, I hired someone that I believe currently is amazing and great for the role, but you're right. I'm actually, I'm not going to know until a couple of months go by. Yep. And that's why we have probation periods. So <laughs> right. it's, it's, that's why we put those in place because you you think it could be great and then you don't know if it's going to work out or not until yeah. you get to know them. Yeah, um, of course. I mean, so even, your process is great. You know, you look at uh, just the interview process. When is the last time you hired somebody at a bad interview? Right? You don't, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So you only hire somebody when they have a terrific interview. Yet yeah. so many people don't work out. The, yes. Ergo, the interview process is flawed. Yeah. Yes. Exactly oh, true. there's one other thing I was going to mention with regards to the right seats on the bus. So in our practice, this was a shocking statistic that came out of, of hiring over the, the years. Guess what percentage of people who apply for job A end up getting job A versus move to, let's say, job B in our practice? Drum roll. So a big percent? <laughs> 50%. It's almost oh. exactly 50%. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So hmm. you think about that too, right? That gets back to the right seats on the bus. They yeah. apply for a job. They don't know what the job's all about. Like, yeah. Come on. Nobody yeah. knows. Okay. Like, yeah. What's an yeah. optician? Well, they yeah. help with glasses. Okay. Well, nobody who's an optician would ever sum themselves up as that, right? Yeah. You know, you got to be part psychologist. You got to be yeah. part yeah. of everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so <laughs> they they apply for the job. And then what happens is our strengths and talents tell us that they would be a better fit for a different job within the, or a different role within the practice. So we move them and they're happy. Yeah. They don't care, you know, yeah. but assuming that the, uh, the hours are similar and the, or the same mm-hmm. and the, the pay is similar or better, you know, that type of thing. Um, but what does happen on the practice side of things is they're vastly more successful in the job and they stay yes. longer. Yeah. Cause they're working towards their strengths. So they like it more. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So they, they wake up in the morning, work. they roll into work. They do a terrific job. They don't understand why it's special. Yeah. You know, I don't understand why it's it. special. People no uh, more sick calls for you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no one called yeah. it sick. Yeah. I mean, who wants to go to a, into work when you hate the job? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's so true. Are you no, really sick? Well, we both know that's not the case, you know, <laughs> but you hate the job. We do know that's the case. Yeah. Um, and you know, here we are. Uh, Dr. Neil, thank you so much for coming on and telling us all about Build My Team. Thank you. Yeah. This really. Yeah, this really does sound like an amazing program that more practice owners need to take advantage of. Yeah. And if anyone is interested in getting mm-hmm. Build My Team services for their practice, uh, how do they go about it? And how do they contact you or find uh, yep. your information? Oh, thanks. Get started. Yeah, so buildmyteam.com. That's where they want to go. Uh, schedule a consult with our team members. It's free, of course. And what our team members are going to do is... Um, 
ask you what role you're looking to hire. They help streamline that, figure out exactly, like drill down on exactly who you want. Mm -hmm. Then they write the job description, uh, publish it to all those job boards and take it from there. So with Build My Team, you can, we have clients who will hire people with end to end from that phone call, the start of that phone call to actually hiring somebody with less than an hour's worth of work. Wow. Okay. You can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that's how uh, dialed in the system is. And this still works for Canadian clinics as well, like yep. us in Canada and everything. Okay. Yep. Great. Exactly. Okay. Yay. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Neil. And uh, thank um, you both. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, I think we learned a lot and yeah, it's nice to hear another person telling us that we're not crazy with all the staff <laughs> problems we've all experienced as yeah. owners and as associate ODs. We're yeah. all in the struggle together and hopefully mm -hmm. Deepon yeah. and I will get on the same bus that you are on. Cause right now we're still on the struggle bus, but we want to get on the better <laughs> bus on the build my team bus. We'll go from yeah. the struggle bus to the magic bus. How's that? To the magic bus. Yeah. I think we're ready for that now. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to tolerate the struggle bus anymore. How most of us are. I want to yep. get off. I want to yeah, get off. Get <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening to four eyes, the podcast series brought to you by young OD connect. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram or YouTube at Four Eyes Optom for more content. We'll see you next time. Bye.